Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on The Slanted Lens, we're going to take a look at Tamron's new 150 to 500 millimeter lens. This is an f5, 6, 7 lens, variable aperture lens, 150 to 500 millimeters. Before we get too much into how I've used it, I've been shooting with it for the last few days. I've had a great experience with it. I've done everything from wildlife to birds to sports. It's been a lot of fun to use. But let's first talk about how this lens works and exactly how to use this lens so you can get the best results from it. This is an external zooming lens. And what that means is that as you zoom, it's going to telephoto. It's going to make the lens longer. An internal zooming lens means the lens is going to be a little longer and that zooming happens inside the casing or the housing of the lens. Uh, the advantage of an external uh, zooming lens is A, it shrinks a lot smaller. It makes it much smaller to be able to make a compact, to be able to lock it in place, put it in your bag. Tamron has included a lock, so you can lock it in that 150 uh, millimeter mode, and that makes it really easy to be able to lock it when you put it in your bag. But the thing they've done that I think is super important with this, because if you're shooting and you start bumping this, uh, or if you're on a hillside and it starts to, and gravity takes over, is they've got a locking mechanism right here on the collar that will lock this at any millimeter uh, that you're on. That way you can be locked. If I want to be here at 350, I can lock it in that place and it's not going to go anywhere. So let's talk about all the buttons on the side of the lens here, because if you understand each one of these, and there's four of them, it's going to help this lens be perform much quicker for you and be much more effective. So the first one on the top is you have your autofocus range. You have full autofocus, which means it's going to be going as far out and as far in. The motor is going to be driving that lens back and forth that entire range. If you know you're not going to be fo focusing up front really close, then you can go to the second mode, which is infinity to three meters. So that's about infinity to nine feet. If you know you're going to be out there a ways, you don't want to make this motor have to try to focus that last little bit. If you know your subject's going to be way out there, go to the last one, which is infinity at 15 meters, which is about 45 feet. So if I'm shooting that hawk who's just been flying over us here, I'm going to put that to infinity to 45 meters because I don't need it to focus super close. It's out there a ways. And now the motor's going to work faster. It's, going to, it's super fast inside this lens, but it's going to work much quicker to be able to catch your focus and to keep it in focus. So first decision, make sure you decide what focusing mode you want to be on in the situation that you're in. And of course, next is your autofocus or manual focus. So if you're going to be in a focusing mode, you've got to be in autofocus. Uh, I don't shoot in manual very often. It's just too hard for me to pull focus. I use autofocus all the time. Now we go to VC control. This is one that really messes people up. VC control on or off. If you're on a tripod, what would you do? Off. You don't want this thing, the VC control on if you're on a tripod because it's going to create, uh, it's going to not work the way it should. The camera thinks it's moving, the lens thinks it's moving, but it's in a stationary situation and it's going to cause problems. So on a tripod, always keep that off. If you're on, so when you switch to VC on, now you have three modes. The first is a standard mode. It's just a standard uh, VC control. Just give you stabilization, standard stabilization mode. Number two is a panning mode. The lens now is going to uh, work with you as you pan to be able to stabilize. It knows that you're panning. So if you're really panning with something, like a car is zipping by, something that's gonna move fast, then use that second mode because it is made for panning. Uh, mode number three is if you're following something in frame and it's trying to stay with it, and so you're moving a little bit, and it's still going to keep your, su your subject in focus. You're not panning, but you are moving some. And in that movement, it will stabilize and it understands that you are moving some. All right, so there's your buttons. So now when you go to shoot, each time you go to shoot with this lens, decide what mode do I want to be in and how do I want this to work. You do get 23.6 inches on 150 millimeters. You get about 70 inches in a, a bit at uh, 500 millimeters. So it's, I'm usually work, working this somewhere closer to the uh, 150 millimeters when I'm trying to get in close on subjects because I can get in so much closer and it magnifies things and gives a great result. So the weight of this lens is pretty comparable to all the other lenses in this category. It's definitely not heavier than any of them and it's not, it's just pretty much about the same as most of them. If you can't use a lens like this, you don't want to carry it around, I, use a tripod, use a monopod. Monopods are great for a lens like this because it allows you to run and stabilize and I would still use a stabilization when I'm on a monopod because you are moving a little bit and that will allow that stabilization to kick in. I do, I use it and I get good results with that. You may want to test it on how you shoot, make sure you do. So the lens hood has a rubberized edge on it which is really an advantage because if you drop this or bump it a little bit it's not going to bend that edge up and it's going to protect your lens. 
Uh, the lens itself, most all of Tamron's uh, telephoto lenses have this little rubberized edge on it so that if you do bump it on something, it's going to take a little bit of a bump and it's not going to bend that edge of the lens or jam the uh, mechanism. So that's a real advantage. I, I like that about these lenses. All right, so let's talk about my experience with the autofocus on this camera. That's probably the one feature that most people are concerned about when they're buying a lens like this. How's it going to work with Sony? I've used it on the a7R 3 I've used it on the a7R 4 This is the R4 right now. And on each of those cameras, I have been able to use the eye tracking. And interestingly enough, when I was uh, photographing horses, I was able to use the eye tracking animal was focusing and uh, was tracking the eye of the horse. When I shot the peacocks, it was absolutely the eye tracking for animal was following the eyes of the peacock. It's got VXD, which is an extreme motor drive that's going to drive your focus, which really works and responds extremely well. I found it to be very responsive. I was able to follow in tracking mode like a bird if it's flying by. I was able to stay on an object and it was focusing on the eye of a person. Uh, also on a soccer player when I was playing with the soccer players. In each of those modes, I found that the autofocus was responsive and worked very seamlessly with the Sony cameras. Let's talk about the optics of this lens. It's got 25 elements and 16 uh, groups. Each one of those elements is made so that it will control that aberration and give a much cleaner lens, a much sharper image. Each one of those elements has B-bar G2 coating, which is going to help control flare and ghosting. It's just going to give you a much nicer contrast and a lot better color accuracy. So this lens is designed and built with moisture resistant elements so that it's going to be able to be used outside and, and take a little bit of weather, which is what it's meant to do. It's meant to be outside. It is nice when you're zooming with this, you get about, you know, it's not 100 degrees, about 70 degrees to roll from 150 to 500 millimeters. It makes it very quick to be able to roll this in and out, and you don't have to strain your arm all the way around the lens to make that happen. So that works out really well. So at the beginning of the lesson, we talked about the VC stabilization and the different modes to use, but how did it work? You know, in hand holding with this, it's a 500 millimeter lens. When you get this out to 500 millimeters, you're trying to hand hold it. My rule of thumb would be a thousandth of a second. With that VC stabilization, I was able to go to 250 or 200th of a second. Uh, it was not hard to hand hold at that. I didn't shoot much with, of these images with a tripod. I did use a monopod when I was doing the sports stuff, but most of everything else was handheld. So I found that that VC mode one and especially three were both very useful and gave me the ability to shoot this lens at a slower shutter speed than I normally would for a telephoto of this length and this size. So for $1,400, you can get into a lens that allows you to be able to do wildlife or some landscape or some sports type photography. Uh, I carried a single lens on a hike that we did, four miles, and the single lens allowed me to get on tight on things, do some more vista types of things, and to be able to shoot some animals. So it just gave me an all around great lens to be able to walk and to backpack with. I could add to that another lens, it gives me a little wider uh, end after this, which would be great, but this just uh, did a lot of things for me and it was small enough that I could carry it. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as we love making it because we love to be out and be shooting and this was just a lot of fun. The lens was a lot of fun to work with. So check it out, see if it works for you and keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. My SKB 2011 case is perfect for all my Sony gear. Let's pack it up. Sony a7R 3 in a tilted cage, Tamron 2875, Tamron 35 millimeter, Tamron 70 to 28, Tamron 24 millimeter, two Allen wrenches, Argus switch plate and an emery board, Tamron 28 millimeter and a shade, polarizer and step down ring, Metabrones adapter, extra body and lens caps, Sony battery charger, syrup variable ND filter and cleaning cloth, K2M Sony audio adapter, tilt to follow focus rig, batteries in a shutter brands case, nuts and bolts, headlamp, one photo plate. Wah 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 w